This is Greg Grams. This is his house. His house has lots of rooms filled with all kinds of collectibles. He likes to find the best of the best of whatever he is collecting. Welcome to the Grams house. Volo, house of cars. It's Monday morning, and Jay is about to field a sales call that will set the course for his entire week. John Krieger here from Krieger Auto Group. Oh, hi, how are you? Doing well today. My brother and I are trying to locate our granddad's 1947 Buick Roadmaster two-door convertible. It'd be a great thing for us to give to our grandpa and kind of continue on the tradition of a, a family business, and I believe you might have it at the museum. Well, if uh, you look on our website, we just reduced it to 59,000, so that is the sale price. What about you and your team? making the trip down here to Muscatine and, and helping us deliver the vehicle. Jay's enticed by the idea of delivering the Roadmaster in person, but he has to get permission from his father before making a commitment. It's time for the Graham's weekly war room meeting. We have one of the largest collections of one-of-a-kind cars, and we haven't been finding any lately. How did you let this get past us? A 540K Mercedes. Isn't that like a million dollars or something? It's $12 million. The 1936 Mercedes-Benz von Krieger 540K special Special Roadster is a car of legendary status. Owned by Baroness Gisela von Krieger during one of the most tumultuous eras of the modern age, the 540K Roadster moved from Paris to Monaco to New York City as she fled from the path of World War II. In 1953, she stored the car in Greenwich, Connecticut, before returning to Switzerland to mourn the death of her younger brother. She would never return to reclaim the 540K before her passing in Switzerland in 1989. The restored vehicle went on to sell at auction for a record-setting $12 million to an undisclosed buyer. Since then, the location and ownership of the 540K has been lost to public knowledge. So I did do some research, and I think I know where the car is located. I believe it's in Muscatine, Iowa. Wait, what? I sold our 1947 Buick to Muscatine, Iowa, to the Krieger Auto Group. Original Krieger building, there's a car collection in there, and they believe that that's where the car is located. If there's any chance of getting this car, we have to have it for the museum over here. I plan on being gone one day. Now that we're looking for this ghost Mercedes, I'm going to be gone two days. I would say it's a reason for concern because I've seen the, uh, the crazy stuff that he does. Right, let's get going. Get the truck fueled up and get on the road. I need 50 grand. Okay, for what? My uh, movie car guy, he's got a truckload of cars uh, out in Mexico. What kind of cars? I have no idea. All I know is there's a truckload of cars, seven or eight cars. Okay. You want to pay 50 grand for a truckload of you don't even know what. They're filming Fast and Furious down there, so I'm thinking these cars might all be Fast and Furious cars, or at least some of them. And I can take the risk and maybe make it into 250,000. Strikeouts are costly, though. Brian, if you lose, you owe me 50 grand. This trailer, it's not empty. It's full of gold. Jay is set to deliver the 1947 Buick Roadmaster to the Krieger family of Muscatine, Iowa. But there are a few bits and pieces that need to be taken care of first. We don't ship a car until it's right. I want to pretend like I'm selling it to a family member. Jay took his father's advice and uses Rock Auto to order the parts he needed to complete the work on the Roadmaster. Two days later, Jay checks the status of the car with his son Ryan, who manages the mechanic bay at the museum. Rock Auto was essential in putting that 1947 Buick Roadmaster back into driving shape so we could get it down to the Kriegers for their big surprise. I guess you could say I'm retired. I don't make any money. I only spend it. I've had the privilege of getting all these exhibits together. We're gonna have another exhibit, Kitty Rides. The old-fashioned Kitty Ride was called 1953's fastest growing business by Billboard magazine. And in today's digital age of tablets and gaming, Greg is doing his best to keep the memory of that business alive. We have the Rockets, the Etzel Tiger, the Pig Ride, all the different horses. We have 90% of the rides, and the kids can actually ride them. It's morning in Muscatine, Iowa, and the Grams boys have traveled 200 miles to deliver a 19 1947 Buick Roadmaster. The man who started the business was actually Joseph Krieger. Second generation was Marvin. Third generation was my father, Doug. Joey and I are the fourth generation. Rumor has it that there's a 540K Mercedes floating around here somewhere. There's been some rumors about that. Well, I hope that rumor can be true. Jay and Brian were kind of a little hesitant to deliver this car uh, down to Muscatine, throwing out the hidden gem that we think the Von Krieger car may be located here. The moment of truth. Wow. Is that the right car? Very nice. That is yeah, the vehicle. Buick Roadmaster. Yes, right. sir. Right. 47. The 47 Roadmaster is as shiny as the new cars we sell on our lot today. When the gate came down, that vehicle, it just shined like a brand new penny. My grandfather, when he sees this car, he's going to lose it. I think it's an elegant, classy car. Born and raised in Muscatine, Iowa, 
Gary has been the owner and operator of Gary's Garage since purchasing it from the Kriegers in 1991. You can never tell about the car collector market. Some cars lose favor and the price goes down. Other cars, all of a sudden, the price spikes. I've had a few people ask about that 540K, but I have no idea where that rumor started or how that uh, took off. Jay is impressed with Gary's collection of classic cars, which includes a Daimler convertible and a 512 TR Ferrari. While Jay and Gary take the tour, Brian is a man on a mission. You know, Jay got pretty excited when he saw the 56 T-Bird with a for sale sign on it. I think he's trying to bring that one home. There's only one spot in the trailer and it's gonna be with a Mercedes. Well, I haven't found it yet. I didn't think you would. Well, I do have a Mercedes here that I'd take 12 million for. <laughs> your treasure hunting, you don't always find your treasure chest. Today is the day of the big surprise. I think uh, my father, he's going to be speechless. Joey and John don't think I like surprises. Well, they're probably right. I don't. The 60 years went like a rocket. And of course, I'm semi-retired. The other guys do all the work. What's going on here? What are the old people doing here? You remember that 1947 Buick Roadmaster? My God. Let's go check it out, Grandpa. Whoa, look at that. Marvin came around the corner in the truck with his grandsons, and I think he was pretty surprised at uh, what he rolled upon. To give that car to Marvin, that was just a, a great thing to be a part of. The look on his face was priceless. For 60 Thank years. you so, I can't believe this. I had this back in 1947. You ought to see the girls I took out of this car. <laughs> My gosh. Seeing my grandpa drive off in that 1947 and that smile on his face, it's something that I will take with me for hopefully the next 60 years of business. You know, Jay seems to think that we're done looking for this Mercedes, but something that he forgets, I'm the one driving. I'm the movie buff in the family. I kind of brought my own flair to the museum here. Today, Brian is taking a risk. He's purchased a $50,000 trailer containing anonymous movie cars. He has no idea what's inside. A uh, truck that nice, I'm sure you don't haul junk. It might as well be a garbage truck for what's inside him. I know Fast and Furious was uh, filming right about the location that this trailer was at. So I'm hoping and I'm thinking that there's some Fast and Furious cars. Why would anyone sell a trailer full of good cars for that little money? Brian remains hopeful after the bumper is offloaded. But the first car does not boost his confidence. I don't know if this is Fast and Furious or not, but uh, maybe it's a camera car or something. I think it's a rusted old blazer. We opened the trailer and the first car was a piece of junk. I didn't think anything else good was coming out of there. Well, here's the Honda Accord. Those are popular. This thing's been sitting in a field. What are you gonna do with this? Honda Accord. Hope isn't lost yet. I hear something that sounds good. Hey, hold on. You know what okay. this is? This is Don's car from the opening scene of Fast 4. The 1987 Buick Grand National is in beautiful condition, and Jay immediately sees the potential to add this vehicle to his inventory. But it's the last car that proves to be a big winner, a 2012 Subaru Impreza WRX. Yes. I you, even know, you what, know that what that car was? is. That's from Fast 7. Yeah. That's the one that dropped out of the airplane. Now, that is the home run. After they cleared out all the junk. The two winners were all the way in the back, which was a Subaru and a Grand National, both from Fast and Furious. Dad will be happy. Brian's bet on the movie car trailer paid off in the end. We did good. Uh, we sold the 47 Buick Roadmaster. We delivered it. Unfortunately, there's no Mercedes in the trailer, but Muscatine, Iowa, it's a great town. A lot of car people there. You found the car? They didn't find the car, but I'm not giving up. I was a little scared when the door opened and it was a bunch of junk and a rusted out blazer, but I hope that the good cars were in the back and they were. So easily turned $50,000 into $250,000 with some good research and a roll of the dice. Well, another success for a good week, but we have no time to rest. Whether we win or lose, it's another good week for the house. Volo House of Cars.